Picking up mooring balls is a key skill when you're cruising around, so here's some tips on how to do it. Sailing virgins! G'day, I'm Jack. I'm James. We're Sailing Virgins. We're here in um, beautiful Maria's Cafe in Beckway. It's like a real sailor's hangout. And Andy, the owner, looks after Beckway youth sailors. It's really cool. Yeah, and Beckway, the bay here, has got a lot of mooring balls. So we thought it's a great idea to show you tips and tricks on how to pick up a mooring ball. We see a lot of uh, bad examples, and we thought we may as well show you once and for all how to do it. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, before we uh, head out on the boat, Andy's just handed us keys to an old jeep. So we're going to go for a blast around the island and check oh, it out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, this is so good. Here we go. <laughs> now we're talking. Oh, this don't work. Just use your hand. Yeah, we use the hand. We're just figuring out which side of the road that we should drive on. We just uh, still don't know, really. All right, I assume it's the left right now. Just trying not to crash. back on the boat and now it's time for us to go and find a mooring ball. So we're going to break it up into six steps. The setup, the approach, stopping the boat, the pickup, securing and checking. So let's go with the first, the setup. So the key thing with picking up a ball in the setup is to have two lines, one on each side and they're both uh, independent. And we're going to work one at a time. This is probably the main mistake that cruisers make. They'll send one line and they'll go from this cleat through the eye and then back to this cleat. There's no redundancy and there's lots of chafing. And so all the uh, incidents we see happen because of that. So let's set up here over the outside. The force is going to go forward, of course. You always go to the furthest part of the cleat. So we're going to do that crossover. The Americans like to go to that, uh, which is totally fine. <laughs> we just like one extra. So that's the way we're going to do it on this boat. And then I can either eight it or I can flake it. I'm just going to flake it for now. Now I know that when I, I put it through and I put this over the top. Now I know that when I pick it up and I put it through, I can throw this in the water and it's going to be fine or I can let it go. Right, so I'm going to do the other one now and then we'll be ready. Right, so now we're ready to go. I'm going to grab the boat hook and then Jack's going to take the boat around for the approach. Yeah. All right, now it's time for our approach. We've just done a little drive by of a ball over here. It looks pretty good, in good condition, has a nice pickup on top. You can't really just go in and just trust that all balls are going to be fine. Some of them, even in the Caribbean, they say they're like illegal balls and they're not really checked. So um, yeah, this one looks good though. Depth is fine. So now, you're going to be working from downwind or down tide, whichever is strongest. We want to be working into that strongest force. Today we're just working with the wind. So I'm going to be working my way up to the ball now. I actually line it up with the V the shrouds it gives us really good vision here on Libertas because we have the um, throttle over here on this side 
So a lot of the time you actually have somebody up on the bow counting down with their fingers on the approach. Um, other times you can just be pointing with the boat hook, but other times when you know what's going on, you can actually just judge when the person up on the front is uh, like ready to go for the pickup. Yeah. Now I'm getting set up for the stop. Now the stop it doesn't just mean I'm going to give the boat a blast to reverse and just hope that it stops. Stop means I'm actually going to stop the boat. I'm looking sideways, setting up a transit. Now if I start drifting back, I can actually make uh, whoever's on the, um, on the bow make their lives easier too by just giving it another little blip of forward just to stop us really drifting back. Otherwise they're trying to tie off lines and the boat's pulling back. You know, they've got eight tons in their hands. So it's nice to give them a bit of support. Yeah. So now we're just coming up to the ball. Like Jack said, there's a few ways to communicate. You might use fingers to count down. Uh, we know this boat pretty well, so um, basically Jack can see and then he watches what I do afterwards. So he knows to keep going. And then when it gets close enough, um, on this particular ball, I'm gonna grab the eye, grab the eye and pull it up. And then I'm going to uh, thread this through and actually then put this through the bottom. Now this is a metallic, this is a stainless steel eye. So this is changing how I would normally do this. If it was a really windy day, I would already have locked off now, but um, it's not a windy day. So uh, I'm just making it so that that stainless steel eye doesn't um, scratch the boat. And you know, there's two lines here, but I've only treated it like there's one line. That's the key, you don't try and do two lines at once or you won't be able to get both, either of them. Yeah. So now we've got one line locked on, I can give Jack a bit of a thumbs up that we're good, he can relax a bit. And, but still I need to get the other one around. If that was a plastic eye, then I would pull that right up here because I'm not worried about scratching the boat. But it's not, it's metallic, so I'm gonna give it a bit of space. Now it's time to get this other one. So. Because we're locked on, we're pretty safe. I can pr pretty much relax. But I can say to Jack, can you bring the boat up just there a bit? And uh, he's gonna bring the boat around. I need to bring this one around the front. So I've got enough slack here for me to uh, just thread this. If it all gets too hard, I can drop it, no consequence. Now I'm gonna take this back around. Back around, I can throw the rest of this in the water. It's flaked, so it's not gonna be a problem and then pull this through. And now I can let this, this original one out. Now that I've locked off on this one, I can let this one out a bit until they're equidistant, until they're equal. Oh, we just like a little uh, tidy up here at the front. It's called tricing. Some people call it cock and balls. So there we have it, we've got a secure boat. You'll notice that there's two lines, one line here going from there through the eye back to there, the other line going from here through the eye back to here. So there's two lines, there's full redundancy, there's no chafing, that's the key to it. If you do that, you'll be absolutely fine. Yeah. So if it's really windy, then actually um, you can lasso the ball. So let's just set this up for a quick lasso. Um, and that, that can make things a whole lot easier. So this line, I'm actually gonna put so that I, my foot um, is going to look after the lasso. So everything's pretty much on the inside now. And I'm just gonna have enough coils so that I can throw it. And I'm gonna throw it diagonally, I'm gonna go to the ball and throw it diagonally way over and above the ball when Jack takes it up. And uh, like I said, normally I might be counting down, three, two, one, but Jack and I know pretty well where the boat is. I can say to Jack, head over there. Um, and now I'm gonna throw it way past the ball and pull in. And it's just gonna suck the ball in there. And um, I can lock that off and then I can do uh, what we were doing before, 
Now in the UK, you see, a lot of the time you get these metallic balls, so you've got to be a lot more careful. With a plastic ball, it's no real big deal if you go up and tap it. But with a metallic ball, you'll be scratching your boat. So, um, so that's basically the, uh, the lasso. We would go and uh, secure as, as per I showed you before, uh, but at least we're locked into the ball, even if it's a temporary arrangement. Yeah! So we've just shown you how to tie to a mooring ball, and we're happy with above the water side of things, but we don't know what's below the water. And even in areas that have a good reputation, like the Virgin I British Virgin Islands, there might be some boat that's just come out and prop wrapped it, or at least um, you know nicked it on the way out, and there might be one strand left. So it's really handy to dive the ball. Another thing when you're in a mooring field is to actually check for the swing room as well. Some balls are placed way too close together and some balls, yeah, just might not be usable because of that. And finally, even though we've shown you how to tie to a ball and we're going to swim it to confirm it now, a lot of the time, probably most of the time, we like to anchor. We know our anchor, we know our chain, we know how much we put out, we know what it's sitting in and we've tested it and it's frankly it's free. So we would generally anchor, especially in sand, but this is, you know, occasionally we do pick up mooring balls and this is how we do it. 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 Oh, mate. Oh, mate. Oh, mate. Oh, mate. So we've done our whole mooring ball episode and I'll just give you a little summary on that and then we'll talk about this incredible tour we've just done. So firstly on mooring balls, one line, or two lines, right? One line at a time so you don't get confused and you'll get it right every time. Yeah, that's right. And so now a little bit about this moon hole. So we've just had a walk around, uh, just been shown around by a local here and it's just incredible. Moon hole in Beckway is like a 1970s sort of hippie utopian uh, village I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing and there's two old couple, they're in their 90s, they walk to town every day. Incredible, like we really feel quite special. <laughs> oh man, look at this road. Where are we going? Yeah. Straight down. This way? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Hello. Arriving at Moon Hole, we bumped into Charles and Cornelia, who we met in town and who've lived there for 17 years. After a big walk around, they invited us to visit their home. Moon Hole has 19 houses, but this one is especially cool. Eight levels with sea views from everywhere. No doors, no windows, unreal. If you enjoyed this episode, click like and subscribe. See you guys later. Sailing virgins, yeah.